micrometers. That's pretty pretty far. Far. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty far. That's about 500 or even more wavelengths. Yeah, yeah, 800 wavelengths. Considering the the refractive index of the glass substrate, yeah, it's about 1,000 wavelengths. Why? Right. I hadn't no, taken into account know. the refractive index. No, no, less than 1,000. But anyway, yeah, yeah, it's about some hundred wavelengths. Yeah. So that's pretty far to experience enough um, diffraction to make a Fourier transform, is it? Is it? No. Um, yes. I don't know. I'm not actually well versed in mathematical transforms using metasurfaces. Yeah, but imagining the lens or grating that you have, usually you that must um, propagate about two, three millimeters. Oh, right. Uh, but that, is that in air? That's in air, and that's already very short focus, a focal distance, right? Some some conventional lenses, their focal length is about 10 millimeter or 20 millimeter. Mm. So but when the, the objective lens you use in a microscope, that has a focal distance about one millimeter. Mm. Then you see that that's really really close. <laughs> yeah, but this one is well, that's half a millimeter basically. All right, yeah. So that that's that's not very very thin. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, half a millimeter. So yeah, that's a, that's achievable. What? Pardon? What do you say? Yeah, Claire just got the fidget spinner in, so she's so excited. <laughs> but no, she's so excited. Not. You're not? You are. Yeah. All right. Um, so this is explained, but it's interesting is this is not very oh, well. That's, maybe that's pretty wide. 600 micrometer. Yeah. That's again half a millimeter, so that's. It's in a terms huge of a, and a structure. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. With a lattice constant of half micron. Yeah, that that's, that has about one thousand two hundred structures in it. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, uh, what's that? They um, is it something nice? Three D um, three D rendering to three D graphic, or I think it's not a real image. Oh, really? Or I think is it is it a real image. It does seem to be a real image. Really? Oh! This one whole thing is um, metasurface one, and this yeah. whole thing is metasurface two. Yeah. And if you zoom in, then you will see the nanostructure. Yeah. Oh. So then there's a real image with a nice camera. Yeah. It seems to be taken at a slight angle, so you can see the through the glass. Yeah, and you see the reflection of metasurface one in um, the metasurface two. Um, so, so you you plane. mean the the third one here yeah. at the bottom? What is that? That's the reflection of metasurface one in the glass interface of metasurface two. Why? Not from the not from the structure of Metasurface Two, mm -hmm. but the light that's coming from behind the substrate, mm -hmm. uh, from the light that is coming from over here yeah. and passing through the transparent glass. Yeah. Uh, No. The light that's coming through metasurface 1 at an angle and missing metasurface 2. Missing? Yeah. Missing what? 
Oh, so, oh, right. Can I open paint? Um, I don't know. Oh, actually, we can just do it here. So, it's for the light that comes through here. Yep. It's coming through here at an angle. Yep. It's hitting here and reflecting back in out here. And that forms a third object that appears to be here. Um, so the metasurface 1, the image of metasurface 1, which is directly reflected by the gold uh, reflector yeah. without hitting the metasurface 2. Yeah. All yeah. oh, right. So yeah. that, that's, that, that's, that's the one. Just yeah. from that transmission there. Right. So it appears to be here. Oh, I see. Yeah, I understand. Oh, oh really? Yeah. So only some part of the metasurface one is reflected because the other part is has to go through the metasurface two. So that's actually probably why they lose their transmission efficiency as a function of angle. Why? Because as you increase the angle, more of the light is passing directly through and missing but metasurface two. Yes, but I think they only measured the component which is reflected by the metal surface too. Um, Dad. Uh, well, because anyway, they they're not measuring um in this area. No, no, because, uh, I, th that's what I mean. Th that's why they lose um efficiency as the angle gets larger. Well, uh. But if, if it doesn't hit the meta surface too, it will not reflect it back to the integral to the detector. No, then and that's why they lose efficiency, because they're saying as the angle gets wider, the efficiency of the retro reflector is decreasing. When, are you going to go to home? when we finish this. When do you finish? When do we finish? Yeah. Uh, we have one more figure to go, uh, yeah, that's fine, or two more, I guess, <laughs> one more, yeah, yeah. alright, uh, two more, two more, and yeah. it's time for you to go no. to bed, no, alright, um, <laughs> <laughs> alright audience, uh, we're doing a midnight journal club with uh, <laughs> Daniel Langley today, and, um, oh, what's going on, oh, sorry, <coughs> Yeah, I need to do this. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and if you zoom in, the meta surface one, it looks like this. There's a tilted SEM image, of course, right? Yes. It's a beautiful image. Yeah. I really love the um, complex reflections when they're illuminating it with white light. Oh yeah, that, that that's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, you mean the left one is beautiful, right? Well, right. <laughs> the, the zoom in SEM is not. <laughs> no, the, the zoom in SEM is beautiful as well because of yeah. the, the perfection of the structures. Yeah. Um, it is very difficult to fabricate structures like that. So, um, of right. course, this, this yeah. is a representative example of their structure. All of their structures look like this perfect array, I'm sure. Then why do you think it looks like um, it's curved here? Uh, because I believe that they've deposited the structures in a circular array. Because the array structure is actually a hexagonal array. It's not a square array. All right. So the lattice constant of 450 nanometers is for the hexagonal lattice. Yeah. Um, and I guess rather than making a square structure, they've just made it as a circle. You know, uh, well, uh, so this circle, um, this part looks like concave or convex. I don't know what you mean to say it's that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it's I think it's flat, but it gives some effect as it's 
concave. Yeah, I think that's an optical illusion that's occurring because of the um, Fourier transforms that are happening to the light uh -huh. that's passing through. Good explanation. And because these two structures are both imparting momentum changes and a Fourier transform, yeah. and we're using white light, each of the uh, wavelengths experience a different momentum transfer and a different spatial translation, depending on the position they hit the uh, metasurface 1 and metasurface 2 at. Which is why we get the complex um, breakdown of colours which yep. makes that photograph so beautiful. Yeah, right. So they made a list. Uh, I am seeing uh, 16 arrays of it. Yeah, at least 16. At least 16, 4 by 4 We can probably quite it, comfortably say that there's another row up above yeah. as well. So, yeah. So at least 16 and maybe more. Mm -hmm. And in one device, they have... 600 micron structure of 450 nanometer Rays. constant array of double stacked. Yeah. Yeah. That's a and lot of EBL. EBL? Yeah. I wouldn't do it EBL because it's really, it would take years. <laughs> How would you do it? I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> the EBL is doing EBL. This is crazy. I don't think there's any other way of doing it though, because if you want to control the diameter of your posts in a spatially driven distribution, then the only way to do it is by EBL or FIB. FIB is even more crazy, so yeah, EBL is better <laughs> in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, but um, should they be also aligned? I mean, the, the top layer and bottom layer. Yes. How accurate they should be aligned? Mm. Or they can be just... Uh, I think pretty accurately because the design of Metasurface 1 is designed to spatially position the incident light at a location on Metasurface 2 yeah. to enable the correct... Um, momentum transform. Yeah. So. So is it really um, fabrication? Uh, well, uh, well, how do I call it? Well, intense fabrication is re required. Yeah, or well, is it, yeah. I mean, I guess what they probably did was um, use photolithography to de define front and back alignment markers. Yeah. And there you can reasonably easily produce um, less than half a micron um, layer identification. So that would enable them to get less than half a micron yeah, within overlay, overlay one pitch. All right. Within one pitch, yeah. yeah. So I think that's reasonable to assume. But yeah, you definitely can't do photolithography for the fabrication of this structure because these, um, if we have a look back at the figure here, the diameters of the rods yeah. are lower than the wavelength of UV light. Yeah, so well, you... well, still, there are semiconductor yeah, company, they do that, but yeah. Uh, but it's a different story, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yes, I. You're right. Maybe they're using. Um, <laughs> I mean, they do. Oh, yeah. They put all different techniques to to make it possible. But yeah. Yeah, um, I saw a really interesting paper actually on that using <laughs> uh, Fresnel lenses, where you use the, you actually create your photo mask is actually a diffraction pattern of the structure that you want to create. Oh, really? And then you put the light broadly across the entire device mm -hmm. and it creates um, the interference pattern that is projected onto your substrate makes a sub wavelength. Really? I mean, I mean, if it's interference pattern that, that doesn't go 
into the surveillance uh, regime. This one definitely was. Interesting. It was, they were, but they were using something like a 40 micron square to produce a five, no, 50 nanometer circle. Oh. Yeah. I mean, only, only in the, only in the optic sense, the beam spot itself will never go below subway length. But combining the, um, the chemistry mm. and development technique and with the uh, controlling the, the development method by controlling the intensity of the light and this, all these things. Yeah. Even the beam spot itself is larger than the wavelength or, or not larger than 50 nanometer. Maybe they can still resolve, um, Structures of the structure smaller. with a smaller than that. Yeah, yeah maybe. So, uh, yeah, but this one is <laughs> it's very. Uh, it has to be ABL fabricated. Oh, yeah. But yes, it would be a nightmare to make. Do you, you want to go to the method section to see the uh, fabrication? Uh, yeah, or it might be in the caption. All oh, right. Yeah, we haven't read the caption yet. Right. Uh, Right, this is an outlet. Figure three, monolithic. Monolithic? What does it mean? Uh, it means a thing with monoliths. Then wait. So a monolith is a standing pillar. Um, what, what, what does it mean? That you... it, it's a standing pillar. Yeah. So like a, a single okay. object that is continuous in one piece and is mm -hmm. standing upright. So that means monolithic. That means monolith. Monolith. And um, a monolithic is uh, made with monoliths. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Monolithic planar retro reflector made of two meta surfaces. Well, a schematic drawing of the planar retro reflector. What is A? All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two meta surfaces are patterned on. All right. Now it comes the opposite size of the glass. <laughs> yeah, doesn't, right. doesn't say how. Doesn't say how. <laughs> yeah. Be a uh, optical image of an array of retro reflectors. Yeah, that's good. Each reflector is composed of meta surface one on the front side and. Meta surface two on the back side, the third meta surface in the image. Oh, right. oh explaining. Mm -hmm. Behind meta surface two is the image of meta surface one in the reflective gold coating of meta surface two. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, well, but it's a, it's on reflected on the gold coating, but not on meta surface two. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. So meta, the gold coating is continuous between <laughs> yeah between the meta surface. meta surface two and the other meta surface two. Yeah. yeah. Right. Inset scanning electron microscope image of the nanoposts forming the meta surfaces. The image was taken before the oh nanoposts were embedded in the SUA. covered with SUA. All right. So they made nanoposts first. Mm -hmm. And they spin coat the uh, the SUA, I guess. Yeah. What, what's the what's the way? You spin coat the SUA? Is the general way? To... I I've only ever done spin coating. Yeah. Um, you can also do ray mod, a manga rod coating. Okay. Um, it's where you have a grooved rod that you um, roll across the surface, oh, nice. and it, it produces very uniform films. Really. Um, that's right, but, it, I, but it's more for like large scale production. It's like rolling a roll on a, a kind roll of like a roll of ink. ink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, roll of ink usually. Roll of ink, yeah. So it, it's one of the things I do for um, screen printing in, in some processes oh, wow. to create the uniform film on the screen, which is then transferred to the shirt or something like this. Oh, right. You can do that with mayor rods. I think that there's also, um, you yeah, of course, for a large scale, like half meter wide thing that you cannot speak, well, maybe you can still speak code, but well, there will be, 
people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For roll to roll processing. Yeah. Um, Mayor Rod is the standard technique. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, but I guess this one they speak all day. Yeah. yeah. I have heard people talking about uh, spray coating SUA. Oh, okay. Um, but I've never seen it. Um, so I don't know. It doesn't say how they fabricate it. Do you want to go for the method for fabrication? Um, yes, I do want to. Let's let's do it. Let's find out. Let me see. So we're guessing too much, and we don't really. Oh, there right it is. Now. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not fair. Why? Um, this is the online version, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, I don't like it. Yeah, that's inappropriate. I mean, to see in this this in the online version, I should go through the VPN and this thing. Mm. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that will be a question that we have to. Yeah. Find out later. Fabrication. Just do a quick search. EBL? <laughs> Just do a quick search in the document to see if there's EBL anyway. Ah, all right, yeah. Uh, yeah, you search. Yeah, and draft. In, in lithography or? Okay, let's just try EBL. Uh, there's draft. five times. Five. Right? So. Oh no, that's five of seven. Pages. There's no matches found. Ah, all right. Let's try lithography. Yeah. They tried to avoid the all the uh, abbreviation. Even lithography. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're they're saying something here. They use zep. All right. It's here. Yeah. I mean, they say it's online version on. Uh, I mean, they. Uh, so the methods that they're referring to us in the online version must be for the measurement of the devices. Really? Um, simulation is here. And fabrication is here. And measurement here. So, so they're what, all there. What's, what's the other method? Um, oh, maybe... No, no, I, I think it's all there. I don't know why they... So I think... Oh, really? This is because this is the online version. This is where the paper version stops. And yeah. then we go yeah. to references. If you scroll down now, we go to references. And then on the page after that, we have the actual fabrication details. Yeah. So that's obviously to comply with the length restriction of the publish paper version. Ah, yeah. But they've included it in the electronic version. Yeah, Nature Photonics, they still print this thing, so yeah. <laughs> so they don't they don't include this. Okay, so it uh, is good that the methods is here. It's still in the yeah, PDF. All right, yeah. All right, um, what we can see here is... So they did use PECVD for the deposition of the silicon? What do you say? Uh, uh, plus minus the chemical vapor deposition. Yeah. Just uh, for what? That's for the deposition uh, for of the the silicon. Um, for silicon. All right. Yeah. 16 nanometer thick layer. And they use uh, ZEP, mm -hmm. even resist, spin coat, and RIE that they did RIE or what is that? Uh, so the developer, then they put a layer of Aluminium oxide, and then maybe lithium. Yeah, so they put the aluminium oxide to act as a hard mask, and then they dry etch the silicon layer using Bosch process. Yeah, and then the aluminium oxide was stripped by using ammonium, ammonium and hydrogen peroxide. Wow. Oh uh, yeah, it's been coated two micron thick layer of SUA. So so what's what's the whole process? Right. So 
I, I, I'm, uh... You want to break down the process? No, no, uh, I was wondering how they align these two patterns. No, they don't say, but I'm 100% sure that they're using... So they, they, basically they have one, one fused silica substrate, and they fabricate one on this side, and the other on the other side. Yeah. Well, actually, they're using glass, not fused silica. Well, they're saying fused silica. Oh, right, they do too. So why does it say glass in the other side? I mean, uh, fused silica is a type of glass, technically. Yeah. So, and then amorphous silicon was deposited on both sides. Uniformly across the whole wafers, which is easy to do. On both sides. Mm -hmm. oh, so you just put the wafer as a lot? No. No? Not in PECVD. Because you have to have the plasma. So is it directional? Uh, it's not directional, but... Um, so, uh, I, so if it's directional, then you, you need to make deposit on one side and take it out and yes. to do it on the other side. Yeah. All right. So they, they, they did it. That's what they've done. All right. Yeah. And, um, what's that? Uh, all right. So the even ridges, it's been coat, and then a post pattern, metal surface one was written by EBL. And the charge is being cornered. Prior to, what was it? Um, this is uh, um, the um, e spacer. Um, that that's called e spacer of sixty nanometer of uh, e spacer. Uh, that means. They did EBL on silica substrate on silicon. Well, silicon is on, on silica substrate, and they coated their um, even ridges. So there is no, uh, not enough uh, conductive layer mm. in the structure. Maybe amorphous silicon will, will be conductive, but not enough. So they needed a, another conductive layer to avoid the, um, the charging electron effects. charging. So that's what they're saying here to prevent pattern distortion due to electrostatic charging. Yeah. So this 60 nanometer thick layer is E spacer, something called E spacer. Well, it's actually Aquasafe it's from Mitsubishi Bayo. Yeah, um, maybe E spacer is a product name. I don't know. E spacer is probably a product name as well. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But it, it's the same as, I mean, at the MCN we use... Chromium. Yeah, 30 nanometers of chromium. Yeah, so we use uh, chromium, but they... It's also a quite uh, well-known technique that mm. they use uh, conductive polymer, basically. Yeah. yeah. And it's easy to remove. Yeah, and it probably has less of an interaction with the electron beam, incident electron beam, than the uh, chrome does. Yeah. 60 nanometer. Right. Because most polymers are made with carbon. Mm -hmm. So having a lower elect good night. Having a lower electron density means yeah. that the uh, scattering from that layer will be much lower. Yeah, so they're they're conductive enough to uh, to avoid the electrostatic charging, but they're not very um not they don't have in but um, too much uh, for electron to uh, cause problems. <laughs> yeah, some, some other effect. Yeah. All right. After the lithograph step, the charging dissipation dissipating layer was removed. How? Well, and the resist was developed in a developer. So the dissipating layer was removed in the developer. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. And a 70 nanometer thick layer of aluminum oxide is the body is by lifting of the... So they use aluminum oxide as an etch mask, right? Yeah. Why? Because it's resistant to the Bosch process. Wow. 
Bosch. Uh, wh why did they call it Bosch? Because it was developed by Bosch. Oh. That's the name. That's the name of the okay, process, well. yeah. This is the name who uses SF6 for... Um, CF, CF, C4, F8, and SF6 gas yeah. process. Uh, cycles of that. All oh, right. That's called the Bosch process. I see. That's why I see in the RIE um, machine that the recipe is called Bosch 1 and Bosch 2 and <laughs> yes, whatever Bosch. So, yeah. All right. Thanks to Bosch. <laughs> And then what's the next? All right, so they removed the aluminum. Uh, what's so the aluminum al oxide? after doing the etching of the Bosch, yeah, of the amorphous silicon using the Bosch process, they then um, ammonia and hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, uh, that doesn't sound very um, safe, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hydrogen peroxide. Oops. That's H2O2. H2O2. Ah. Yeah. It's what you use to spike a piranha solution. Which is... H2O2 is okay. Yeah. yeah. Ammonia is just the... Well, it's, it's not very good. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's actually two chemicals that you could have in your home. All right. Because if your wife dyes her hair blonde one day, then she would probably have hydrogen peroxide. Oh yeah, to strip yeah, the colors sure. out of it. Yeah. And ammonia oh, is in some. most of your cleaning bleaches. So, oh, right. yeah. If you want, we could strip some aluminium oxide. <laughs> oh, why? Peroxide. Yeah. I never learned that. But I guess that means uh, it has one more oxide, uh, oxygen in there, right? Hmm? No, it has one hydrogen per oxygen. Ah, oh, right. That's H2O2. Yeah. Hydrogen per oxygen. Oh, I see. Per I thought hydrogen I... Hydrogen per oxide. Oh. Uh, uh, so usually... So, ah, oh, right. But it's... Hydrogen per oxide. Oh, right. It's different from one oxide. Well, I don't know if you say that. Peroxide, yeah. there is no. Then dioxide. Yeah. But peroxide is. But since the hydrogen is not it, it, one hydrogen, it's more than one, so. Yeah. But why? Well, it said, you can say hydrogen dioxide. No. You, you could say carbon um, peroxide for carbon monoxide. Really? You could say it. You don't, but you could. All right. Because there's one carbon atom and one oxygen atom. All right, that's carbon monoxide, yeah. Yeah. And then carbon, carbon dioxide, dioxide is one carbon and two. So if there are two carbon and two oxygen, then you can say carbon, mono carbon peroxide? Yes. Well, that's basically what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. hydrogen, two hydrogen and two. Yeah. All right. But I don't think I that is stable, two carbon, one oxygen. Uh, uh, two carbon, two oxygen. Actually, like. this is not stable. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is reasonably stable. If you look at it wrong, it will break down. <laughs> I mean, you can keep it in a bottle for months. Yeah. Well, but if you give it a little bit of chemical energy, it'll break down. Yeah, we can easily. Well, you know, there, um, there's, there's something that the potassium thing that you, you can use as a catalysis. Uh, to to make that that reaction faster, that mm. it will it will separate into water and oxygen. Yeah. Is that the potassium thing? Uh, manganese, manganese, magnesium, manganese, something. Potassium, manganese oxide, or something. Potassium mag mag manganite. manganite. <laughs> Potassium yeah. manganite. I don't know. I guess. Well, that's how I learned in my you know, middle school class. <laughs> All right. Well, what? I, yeah. Anyway, the the name here in Korean translation is mm -hmm. we have excessive oxygen than water. So that's the word we have for that molecule. 
So more, ah, right. Excessive oxygen, more oxygen than water. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's what we we name. <laughs> that's it. really interesting. Yeah. So so I I guess that oh that's that means excessive, but it's not. Yeah. Uh no, it doesn't. Yeah. It, so so that's what I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, where are we? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So they removed the what is that? Aluminium dioxide. Aluminium oxide. Or? Aluminium oxide. There sh shouldn't be dioxide. It's Al two or three or something. Right? Yeah. So it's yeah. It, it's dry oxide. It, it's <laughs> dry. Dry. Di aluminium trioxide. Di aluminium trioxide. Yeah. All right. It's like. Uh, <laughs> did you see the thing on the web a couple of years back? People were saying um, that McDonald's should be um, boycotted because they're adding um, dihydrogen monoxide to their um, Coke. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's not good because that that reduced the um, what's it, the density, or I mean the the sugar <laughs> content. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a Coke syrup which you add water to normally. But yeah. McDonald's should be sued because they're adding dihydrogen monoxide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It had people up in arms for a day, and then everyone realized that it meant water. Yeah, well, it's better they didn't put the hydrogen peroxide there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. To protect the nanopores, uh, the uh, damage general. Um, all right. So for the aluminium to remove being the the aluminium dioxide aluminium oxide thing, mm -hmm. they would there's a chance to damage the other side. So they coated the SUA to the other side, right? Uh, no. Oh, what they're well, saying is they they did. The, they finished the process of one side. Yeah. They they coat SUA to protect the fabricated metal surface. Yeah. Well, not metal surface, but the fabricated nanopores on metal surface one side, right? Yeah. Then they go through the metal surface two side. And what they're saying now is that they go through the same fabrication process, except instead of using the ammonia and and hydrogen peroxide to remove the um, aluminium oxide, they left it there because it would attack the cladding of Metasurface 1. The SUA cladding. Alright. So, Metasurface 2, in fact, is actually silicon pillars uh, and then coated with gold and between each of the pillars is a layer of aluminium oxide. Really? So it's not it's not SUA? No, it is SUA covered as well. But what they're saying is that in this structure, yeah. on in each of these gaps ah, right. there's aluminium oxide. So the edge mask is still there. Yeah. It's incorporated and they into the structure as well. And they coat it um, SUA. Then they coat it with SUA. Then why they had to remove the... They had to remove it on this side yeah, so why? that the light could transmit through. So... Ah, but it should still need to transmit through there as well. Maybe it's not, not as critical as the more surface one, yeah. Right. Um, Yeah, so it says that the ma oh no, no no sorry it's not in the gaps. My apologies. Um, it's not in the gaps. It's um, on top of the posts because uh, yeah, they're sure, protecting right. the silicon. Yeah. yeah, so the the edge mask is still there. Yeah, the edge so mask, the mask is, still is still there, there but yeah. the gaps are all the way through. Sure, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't matter at that point because the silicon is blocking the transmission at that location. Uh, I don't know. 
maybe maybe it's not as critical as as metasurface one but, well but still the reflection occurs on the gold surface so Mostly, yeah it would be better to remove this one if they could but maybe it's not as critical as the metasurface one in that sense they could have done it. It's just laziness, actually. Um, because if they wanted to, they could have uh, removed the SU8 with SU8 developer. Oh, uh, yeah. They would have to process the material vertically. Um, they could have removed the SU8 with developer and then done the um, ammonium peroxide etch to remove both the aluminium layers at the same time. But they would have had to be much more careful. Because if you just fabricated the structure on this side and didn't remove the aluminium, mm -hmm. then coated it with SU8, then fabricated the structure on this side while it was still had the aluminium there. You then dip it into a bath vertically, so mm -hmm. the solution comes down on both sides and neither the top or bottom is touching the base of the um, solution. You strip off the SU8, mm -hmm. and then you change to another bath to do the aluminium oxide etch. Mm -hmm. um, then they could have had 